probably around 15 years old when I first encountered Howard Arkley, the Australian artist, at the Melbourne Exhibition Buildings and doing graffiti then as well. And it really resonated with my world and what you know, the process was in terms of creating uh, a graffiti piece and looking at this piece of art that was valued and, and you know, part of you know, a landscape and knowing that, you know, hey, this is something I could possibly do with the skills I've got. You know, I was breaking it down, you know, breaking the medium down. And so that always stayed in my head that until I got a bit older and then I, I wanted to know more about him. You know, he was this amazing individual that was also immersed in another sub subcultures and St Kilda and the art scene as well as music and punk scene and, and early Melbourne scenes like that. And what I'd done with graffiti, I couldn't recreate in a gallery context because there's only certain individuals that can do that. But I could then, you know, that was when I started thinking about stylistically and the personal narratives that I've got through my family and the, the history there and about Aboriginal history in Australia and, and contemporary society and, and how these issues, I could discuss them through art. Maybe I could create a, a, an artwork from this idea and concept that to use uh, a Rolls Royce from when I was born, so around 1974, and, and the body shape, they're quite a nice looking vehicle. The car for the project is a 1973 Rolls Royce Corniche. I you know, had this idea based on an image and some stories I'd heard and some stories about some early pastoralists in the early part of the 20th century, so early 1900s, uh, there was one particular guy in the Riverina that had a, a massive property and used to drive around a, an old roller. It, it just always resonated with me and stuck in my head that, you know, such a bizarre, uh, very colonial and very bizarre choice of vehicle for a very, you know, rural, uh, regional area. And, you know, it's a symbol of wealth and power and and colonialism and you know at the same time a lot of Aboriginal people that had been you know displaced and forcibly removed and and then later enslaved on some of these pastoral um, stations and large missions. The idea with the video too is to have this car reclaimed with my artwork and some symbols. Uh, urban style camouflage with a geometric camouflage on it. And this is about, you know, identity and me taking a symbol that is traditionally the Camillora people, so that's my family area. In a military sense, camouflage is relating to concealing and hiding and blending away. And in my sense, it's about being visible. So I'm re reusing it in a different context to promote visibility, promote identity, pr promote culture. And then putting it on this symbol of colonialism and power and wealth. And then taking it back up north to some areas near where my grandmother, uh, who brought me up as a young boy and it was very instrumental in my life and a very important figure, uh, a very strong woman who, who survived amazing trauma in terms of being taken away from her family at the age of eight and, and rehoused on missions and enslaved and things like that. So, so it was more about this personal journey of me returning to an area near where she was born and, and Camilleroy people would do these massive sand engravings and dig out the earth 
and do these beautiful sculpted geometric formations and there'd be men's and women's esoteric ceremonies. And then after that, they'd wipe it over to the very ephemeral nature. So it was more about this personal journey of me returning to an area near where she was born and it's a road trip. You know, I'm referencing all these other movies from the past and I'm you know, from the city, I've got this urban background, I, you know, my notions of uh, concepts of initiation and, and ideology around culture come from that urban perspective, it's from what I know. And that's what this bit works about, you know, it's about a return, a very personal emotional return to, to country but then leaving again, you know, leaving my mark, creating my own sand engravings in the form of burnouts. The, the training was really significant because it showcases the diversity of, of contemporary Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander art. You know, it's, every few years it's you know, changing and you know, there's more artists coming along and current artists are evolving and it showcases the, you know, the important diversity of our culture and identity. It, I mean, so, so often people lump you know, Aboriginal art into one defined, you know, stereotyped, culture or, or identity or art form and when it's not you know there's there's over 300 language groups in Australia each with diverse practices cultural practices art forms religious practices you know patrilineal matrilineal societies so it's important that these communities get you know represented too